everyone, my name is Brian Murphy. I'm with Riverworks and I'm presenting today with Tyler Rosberg with Icon Engineering on the Urban Stream Assessment Procedure. I'm gonna go over the development of the procedure and some of the nuances associated with it. And then Tyler's gonna provide an example where it's been recently applied. So with that, I will share my screen and jump into a few slides. So bear with me just a second. Okay, so this uh, urban stream assessment procedure has been developed in conjunction with and funded by the Mile High Flood District. And uh, really what it starts to consider is when you have a stream that maybe is uh, unimpaired and then goes through uh, uh, influences of urbanization, how it changes over time, and then maybe the restoration and monitoring associated with that. So it can be used in any of those stages, pre-development, post-development, uh, post-restoration. And really the idea is to look at the data collection uh, process and the evaluation of that data and helping with decision making. It's based around the five elements. Many of you have probably seen this before, this figure uh, looking at the five elements that the district is focused on and uh, has a long history of working with hydrolog hydrologic processes and hydraulic characteristics and recently bringing in geomorphic processes, vegetation, and then the uh, most newest and, and probably the most important one is the recognition of community values. And the interactions of those five elements is really the key of the Huffman's framework. And that process is laid out here in this matrix. This is a simplified version of the Huffman's framework with the five elements on the left-hand side and across the top are the considerations of the function that the element has, uh, the importance to the stream, importance to society, and then the overall management goal. I'm not going to spend very much time going into the Huffman's framework. There's a lot more information out there that can be provided through the flood district or contacting me directly. What I do want to focus on here just quickly uh, as it relates to this urban stream assessment procedure is the function and this idea of that the community values help connect the stream helps connect the community and vice versa to the stream. Uh, hydrology, the distribution of flows, hydraulics, the movement of flows, how the uh, stream responds uh, to changes from hydrology and the geomorphology, the, the, the form and the function, the processes, and then the vegetation that resists some of those changes or helps hold the stream together. And really the, the stream assessment brings together the Huffman's framework and really providing this consistent and defensible methods to assess the physical condition, and then the tool that supports planning and design teams as they go through and look at that highest functioning lower maintenance considerations or how they might design in that, um, that paradigm, and, and really bringing in the stream context. I think that's a critical piece of both the Huffman's framework and the stream assessment is what is the context of the stream, uh, the, both the physical context, where it, what's its setting, both within a city and then the geology, the soils, but also the social context of how is the stream viewed, what are the stewardship, um, how is it uh, looked at from even the uh, design criteria or, or the policies that are associated with streams. And so that's, that's the, those are the two key pieces. It's also looked at uh, the stream assessment and at the watershed, the stream corridor and the reach level. And I've got a graphic there that shows the different uh, different scales. That's the water, the uh, Cherry Creek watershed there, the middle um, of the Cherry Creek with the reservoir down at the downstream end. And then you've got the stream corridor, the, the uh, 15 miles or so of what's shown there that might be considered the stream management corridor, the riparian corridor, but really what goes out and influences the stream. And then the reach is typically at the project scale although there are considerations for uh, stream assessment and that, that really get down into the details. Um, and that's really where we have the most number of, of indicators and metrics. So the roadmap to urban stream assessment, it's really divided into these three, three questions. Uh, why are we assessing the riverscape or the, the um, using riverscape there as a general term for watershed or stream corridor or reach? What do we need to understand in the long run? And then how do we assess that watershed or stream to develop that understanding? And it can kind of help uh, guide those conversations and, and understanding the questions that we're trying to get at 
that are key to the higher functioning or maintenance streams. This is a, a figure that goes into detail a little bit more of those three questions and looking at uh, they're couched into three stages and with the stage one or the first question looking at the function and values, the second stage or the second question looking at the attributes or the context. And then the third stage, really, how do we go about doing the um, assessment and, and the, the details associated with there? Uh, a key thing I'll point out with this figure is that you can start at the top level with the first stage, uh, depending on which process you're, you're at. If you're really looking at a high level evaluation and a community development or a community process, a, a master plan, that first question really kind of helps set the stage. If you're really more wanting to understand the physical condition at a reach level, you've already kind of gone through, you have a project um, that you want to move forward with, you can start at the bottom up um, or even just at the third stage. So this is really meant to help illustrate the processes and the different stages that you can, that you can go into um, and the understanding and learning that needs to occur. This next figure tries to align those stages with how we go about the stream assessment process. We're really starting at um, understanding the cat catchment of riverscape or the stream, and then the overall context, like I mentioned before, that, that are really important, and the goals associated with the project, really starting that off. And then going into the overall assessment process, using those five elements, as I mentioned, and there's three steps in that that I'll touch, I'll touch more on here in a minute. And then the final stage is that synthesis of data and how you go about scoring and risk analysis and all, and all of that. That all is tied together through the five elements at the, the bottom there and then having the indicators, metrics, functional characteristics, and then ultimately the scoring that can help determine what the stream condition is. And again, that can be done at the watershed, the stream corridor, or the reach level. If it's at the watershed, it would tend to be more of a desktop type of analysis as opposed to the reach where it would be more uh, rapid or even a detailed type of assessment that you would data, use data collection associated with the metrics that, that we're suggesting be incorporated. Here's the process that I mentioned for the second stage, really the, the meat of the, of the urban stream assessment with those three steps across the top, characterization of a watershed and stream. And uh, I will say that district's really trying to establish a way for that data to be identified ahead of time through um, a consistent data collection process that the district would be able to you go on the district's website, be able to provide that information or they'd be able to provide that information. So working on that now, uh, the assessment of current conditions really is going out into the field most likely or using recent data sets, desktop data sets to come up with um, the information. This is where you would also choose your metrics and your measurements um, and then interpreting that information going through this, this scoring process. And then the third is that diagnostics analysis and mapping. And this is where I like to say, or relate it to going to the mechanic and having them plug in uh, to your car and it pulls up a code that would say, this is why your check engine light is on. All that information that tells you why the check engine light is coming from step two. And then you're using that to understand what is the diagnosis, where those risks, risks are and problems and how we might go about um, mapping those. We wouldn't go through the process of solving those problems. This is just really identifying what those problems are. These are the indicators. I I'm, I'm, won't um, belabor all the associated metrics, but each of the indicators has at least one, but more than likely two or three metrics. And uh, this is really meant to be the menu that you can choose from. I have going through the stream assessment with five elements across the top and then the, the handful of, of Indicators associated with each hydrologic, we've, we've stuck with two. Uh, most of them have three or four, as you can see. The interesting thing is you play around with these and there's, there's certain the interactions, and that really is indicative of what we showed in the five elements figure, the circle that shows the, the cross connections between all five elements. And that, that plays out through the, this, uh, the stream assessment process as you're collecting the information that would go into this the scoring uh, part of this. As I kind of go into closing here and, and wrap up, I want to just note that the stream assessment is being developed. It's at a point where we're doing some piloting and understanding the district's mission and how that can support the health and process, as I talked about at the beginning. It's really helping identify the healthy network. Where is that network healthy? Where is it not? 
where can we look at the change in trajectory, that second point in streams to determine if we have best, managed pra best management practices leading to um, high functioning lower maintenance streams? What are the current conditions before we start up capital or maintenance actual project? And then the fourth one, how do we integrate that into more of a, of a master plan or, or a watershed story uh, that's starting to be used in the district's terminology, this web-based master planning process? I'm excited that Tyler will be able to really go into kind of the first, and I would say uh, maybe the third part of this is, uh, of, is supporting the district's goals, district's mission of looking at how we use the indicators and metrics to gauge where we have healthy reaches and where we maybe want to focus our efforts in a decision-making process uh, because those reaches are, are not actually that healthy or the condition of them is, um, needs to be further evaluated. And then the assessing the current conditions to, to make decisions. One last thing before I, I turn it over to Tyler is that the stream assessment is really looking at the physical condition, as I mentioned, and the social ecological, the social values, those interactions. It's not intended to be a full scale stream health assessment procedure. It, it doesn't consider water quality and uh, or aquatic life. Those could be layered in if there's, that's important for the project sponsors uh, or the project itself. But this really is focused on the physical condition and then the social interactions and the stream influences on those and, and vice versa. So with that, I will turn it over to Tyler and thanks for your attention. I look forward to hearing from you and please reach out with any questions. Thanks for the introduction, Brian. I'm excited to talk to you today about how we applied the urban stream assessment procedure to Big Dry Creek at the South Suburban Golf Course. This project was sponsored by the Mile High Flood District, SEMSWA, and the South Suburban Parks and Recreation District. On our project team, we had Great Ecology providing ecological assessment and permitting support, and Valerian, who provided landscape architecture services. Coming into this project, our team understood by walking the site and talking to the golf course that the stream was quickly degrading. Our project team utilized the urban stream assessment procedure to evaluate the existing condition of Big Dry Creek within the golf course. We wanted to evaluate the existing conditions in order to, one, thoroughly document baseline conditions. Documenting the baseline conditions will allow us to understand the needs of this site relative to other urban streams and understand how much function was gained through restoration by again evaluating the site post-construction. Two, gain understanding of the setting and context of the stream system. While we understood that the stream system was degrading, we were hoping that this assessment would help us better understand the root causes of the degradation. And, and this would allow us to address those root causes in our design efforts and not just fix the symptoms. Lastly, we wanted the stream assessment to aid us in prioritizing stream reaches for restoration. The project site is over a mile long and restoring the whole site at once may not be economically feasible. Therefore, we need to ensure dollars were being spent where they were needed the most. As Brian mentioned earlier, the urban stream assessment procedure evaluates the function of the system across five elements. These elements are hydrology, hydraulics, geomorphology, vegetation, and community values or human connection. Our team identified the metrics within each element that are most applicable to this location prior to collecting data. For example, by talking to the golf course, we understood that the stream crossing structures were an issue. Because of this, we selected hydraulic metrics that, will, that would allow us to understand this problem better. Furthermore, the degradation we were observing on the landscape directed us to pick metrics within the geomorphology section that would help us quantify sediment transport and discontinuities. Our design team was fortunate to have a USGS stream gauge on our site, which aided in our evaluation of site hydrology. A magnitude frequency analysis was conducted to understand peak discharges. Daily flow data was then used to compute the Richards-Baker flashiness index and establish an average annual hydrograph for the site. Land use within the watershed was also reviewed. While assessing the stream's hydrology did not help us prioritize reaches for restoration, because the hydrology is the same across the whole site, it did prov provide us valuable context into the stream's response potential and volatility. This is information that we can use in greater detail in the design and construction phases of the project. For example, we learned that this reach of Big Dry Creek has very high flow variability, and when that's combined with a stream bed composed primarily of sand, we were dealing with a stream that had a high response potential. To assess the hydraulics of the project site, 
Our design team relied heavily on hydraulic models. A two-dimensional model was established to help us understand velocity and stream power across a range of discharges. Hydraulic models and inundation mapping were also used to help us understand the floodplain connectivity or lack thereof. We also evaluated each of the 11 stream crossings on the site to establish the hydraulic capacity and level of service. Several of the stream crossings were found to have less than a one-year hydraulic capacity. This leads to frequent overtopping events. As shown by this video, which was shot in June of this year, flows overtopping the stream crossings are quite powerful and create a safety hazard. They are also expensive for the golf course staff to clean up after the water recedes. Overall, our assessment of hydraulics indicated that the stream system had high flow velocities and stream power, which was largely due to the confined nature of this channel. This effect was amplified at stream crossings, where large volumes of water were being squeezed through small structures, creating extensive erosion. Several methods were utilized to assess the existing geomorphic condition of the creek. A Simon rapid geomorphic assessment was performed to quickly gain an understanding of which stream reaches are most susceptible to degradation. Additionally, in order to evaluate sediment transport continuity, a capacity supply ratio analysis was performed. This helped us identify where the largest incongruencies were with respect to sediment transport. Overall, the entire stream system was largely in a condition where sediment transport capacity was exceeding incoming supply. This discontinuity was largest where the stream incision was the greatest. This data will be helpful to us in design when we look to decrease sediment transport capacity to match incoming supply. Existing vegetation was evaluated by Grady College. Metrics analyzed includes, included riparian width, senescence, average native cut cover, age class, and structural diversity. Overall, vegetation was recorded to be in fair to good condition. The site has a good riparian width in most locations, especially relative to other urban stream systems. However, structural diversity and native cover could be improved. In several places, disconnection from the, from the floodplain was beginning to negatively impact vegetation. Because the project site is an operational golf course, the primary users are the, are the golfers themselves and the staff that maintains the course. For this reason, we relied heavily on South Suburban staff to evaluate the community values or human connection to the site. To discuss this a little more, let's take a quick field trip to the golf course. Good afternoon. We're out here at the South Suburban Golf Course in Centennial, Colorado this afternoon, and I'm here with Tom Harston. Tom's the superintendent of course maintenance and has been an employee of South Suburban for 24 years. I'm here today to talk to Tom a little bit about some of the uh, aspects of evaluating the human connection of, big, of people to Big Dry Creek for the stream assessment procedure. So Tom, what did you guys evaluate when you were evaluating um, how people connected to, to Big Dry Creek and to the course in particular? Yeah, I think first off and foremost, we were really interested in safety and making sure that the crossings that were proposed and that we chose were going to be something that would hold up to compared to what we have existing. Sure. And, and when you're looking at the existing conditions of the site, how are you finding that the existing conditions were impacting how people interacted with the site? Uh, they had a big, big part of that. You know, there was storms that we had that uh, shut down this hole in particular for two and a half days on a weekend. So that was a pretty good financial impact for us on that storm. So it's, it's difficult when you're, you have a clear day and you're still waiting for the water to go down, but it's a foot deep going on the crossing that the golfers have to use. Sir, and were there any safety impacts that you were seeing um, with people were navigating the course? Oh, for sure, yeah. There's times when people will go over this crossing and it might be running a little high and you say to yourself, well, I don't know if I'd be doing that. So sure. it would be something we'd have to kind of constantly monitor. And there were certainly times over on the par three course with some of the silt that would come up afterwards that, you know, even once we were dried out, the golfers and golf carts would slip slide through certain areas. So it was, it was definitely a safety concern. And when you're thinking about once we get to the, the construction phase and construction's completed, what are you looking forward to most about uh, about having this behind you? <laughs> oh, we can't wait to not have to do all the cleanup. Yeah. And just to have connections and, and crossings that people can use naturally and that they're gonna blend into the environment and just enhance their experience while they're playing around the golf out here. Great, well, thanks for talking to us, talking to us today about sure. the stream assessment procedure out at Big Dry Creek. After assessing all five elements of the urban stream assessment procedure, our team compiled re results for each of the 11 reaches. Each reach was graded not functional, partly functional, functional, or fully functional according to the procedure. 
four of the stream reaches were placed into the not functional category, indicating that they should be high priorities for restoration. One reach was, part, uh, was uh, graded partly functional. Five reaches were graded as functional, and only one reach was graded fully functional. Several interesting feedback loops were observed that aided in our understanding of the site. Hydraulics, geomorphology, and vegetation elements were intertwined. Channel sections that were observed to have a high degree of entrenchment and incorrect width to depth ratios were found to have very high stream power and sediment transport capacity. These same reaches were losing floodplain connectivity and vegetation was suffering as a consequence. These types of relationships were seen clearly in the data uh, within several of our lowest performing reaches. In conclusion, our design team feels that the stream assessment procedure provided a great framework for understanding the baseline conditions, prioritizing reaches for restoration, and understanding the context of the system. We believe our results would be reproducible by others following the same guidance. We recommend that special care is given when selecting the metrics which will be used in the assessment. We also recommend expanding the scoring ranges from a 0 to 3 scale to a 0 to 10 scale to aid in distinguishing reaches. I hope you enjoyed our presentation and learned a little along the way. Thank you.